Hello and welcome to episode number 234 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. This is The Secret Show, and that means one thing and one thing only. Lots of talk and very little action. No, wait, that's not the script. Mark Sargent joins me. Hello, Mark. Hello, Patricia. And if it looks like I had some sun recently. Well, you did. I did, and not in a good way. Yeah, well, we are fresh back from Los Angeles, California area, um, Arcadia area, and the Salton Sea, which I'd never heard of before we heard that there was going to be a group of skeptics who wanted to do a test to, to prove curvature. In fact, I think they even called it Earth curvature test something like that yeah they called it something which had a uh which pre presupposed the fact that the earth had curvature as opposed to just you know potential curvature test anyway whatever right. they're skeptics and this particular group led by a man named jim underdown or as i've heard our guest who's here uh in in, in holding pattern right now uh nathan gonzalez call him Jim underprepared, and well, Nathan will yep. tell us why he called him that in a moment. Under prep. Under prep. Nathan yep. uh, has got it right. It's uh, Jim under prep or under down. Anyway, he's the leader of the Skeptic Society, and I think they're very close to the Los Angeles area or based out of it. And they wanted to do this test. And National Geographic was more than willing to go film it, and CBS wanted to come too. And um, it all ended up to be a big debacle but that's what we knew would happen yeah. as flat earthers and we didn't really want to go to this thing you said no when you were first asked to go to the salton sea because you knew that the temperature is so hot there in the desert that there would be an uh, the usual thing that happens when we do site tests um there's that waviness with right. the high heat and the water that right. creates uh, a lack of distant sight so well some things happen during this test which made it completely unfair. And it didn't prove curvature, although, oh my gosh, the amount of trolling comments that have come on all of my videos saying, what do you say now, flat tard, now that the Salton Sea experiment proved curvature? So these right. must be friends of the uh, skeptic group and Jim under prep, or just people sympathetic to the globe. I have no idea. But anyway, without further ado, Let's explain all of this a whole lot better with the help of Nathan Gonzalez, who was there on the scene. He was also at the Flat Earth Meetup in Arcadia, which we'll get to a little bit later. And uh, Nathan, you are doing a little bit of babysitting today. Oh, yeah, just dad, dad stuff. No That's lovely. Take, take care of the kids. It's yeah, nice. I guess it's not babysitting when it's your own children, right? Yeah, I don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Well, maybe you can eat anything you want in the refrigerator and watch anything you want on TV, though. It's usually how it used to work for me in the babysitting days. <laughs> yeah. That's called being a grown-up, doing what you want. Yeah. Well, um, all three of us were there and many other flat earthers. We'll go into who – when we, we can't even name all the names that were there. Um, first off, what intrigued you about traveling out to the Salton Sea and watching this, even though you knew that flat earthers in general have had so many um, experiments not go well because, you know, we didn't prep. What, would, what, what did you want to accomplish by going to this? Were you thinking that maybe it would show that the earth was flat? Um, yeah, I, I was, I was hoping, I mean, I, I felt confident that it would considering uh, they it were is. talking about doing that. <laughs> yeah, it, because it is. And and they were, when they were talking about originally getting the, the test started at like 5.30. Yes. You know, the sun, sun's just barely coming out. Shouldn't be super duper hot. But when by the time they arrived, it was it was already 5.30. And we had to unload everything. We had to assemble everything. We well, you didn't even have to. Balloons. You were part of the oh. Flat Earth team, and you took yeah. your time to volunteer to help the skeptics team set their equipment up. And I heard you say in a different interview that uh, they used uh, rinky-dink equipment and didn't yeah. know how to assemble it and really had no idea how to conduct an experiment. So in a way, Flat Earthers helped them set things up. Um, oh, and, yeah. I, um, they, yeah, I mean, I, w I was there to observe, but... Um, a friend of mine, Sasha, she told me specifically, um, she kind of like just volunteered me like, hey, um, 
I need you to go over to the other side. I want you to be on the side with the balloons, and I need you to just keep an eye on everything. Just make sure they're not doing anything fishy, you know. So that's that's what I wasn't, you know. I, I'm not gonna go somewhere and just watch a bunch of people do a bunch of work and, and just sit back and relax. Uh, that's not really the type of person that I am. Please go in your room. Thank you. Well, in uh, in a way, I think it was very big-hearted of you to go help them. Now, while you were over on the other side, I was on the side mm -hmm. where we were watching. So for you, the sun right. rising was in your eyes. For me, right. I was watching, you know, from the side where most of the flat earthers were. We couldn't mm -hmm. see you unless we used a P900 or something along those lines. And right. you had a friend over on the, let's call it the flat earther side, that mm -hmm. had a P900. Yes. And your friend and you on the... Uh, on the skeptic side of the Salton Lake, nine miles across, mm. were uh, trying to help them, the skeptics anyway, uh, make sure that across the way, they could actually see where the balloons were going to go up. Yeah. So you guys were FaceTiming each other. Tell mm -hmm. us what happened next. Um, so I started FaceTiming because I was getting so frustrated, just the lack of communication skills and lack of preparation. Yeah, they were supposed to be the ones getting the line of sight, not you. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we were just supposed to be there to observe. Like that was that's what we were there. Doing. And and I was just. I mean, the sun was already up. It was getting close to like seven fifteen, seven thirty is coming up, and it's already super hot. And so I got the idea to call my buddy, and he had the P nine hundred, and and I was. And the gentleman who's actually filming me in the video, um, he started kind of like picking my brains, like, how can we help? How can we figure this out, you know? So I started thinking, and <clears throat> I figured I could use FaceTime to um, have him turn the phone around and point it to his viewfinder, and then I could use what he's seeing from all the way across the other side to locate the balloons that I'm standing right next to. So I started just kind of using it like a, almost like a remote control. I mean, you can see in the video, I'm like, all right, Josh, you know, zoom in. All right, zoom back out. All right, you know, go zoom in on these mountains over here and then come down. And then I spotted the cars that were on the highway right behind us. And, um, and I recognized the cars that were in the viewfinder from the cars that I'm like looking at, you know, with my own eyes. And... Mm -hmm. Were Sorry, you thinking at any time while you were helping out, wait a minute, they can see me, they can see the balloons, and they haven't even been launched yet, therefore there's no curvature. Yeah, um, immediately when, when we spotted, when I spotted the balloons, it was like, I didn't want to freak out and be like, ah, we got it, ah, we got you guys, you know, like, <laughs> but I was asking, I'm like, hey, what's the elevation? I was trying to get all the stats, you know, because... These guys are supposed to be scientists and they don't even know like how what the elevation is of in the uh and you know where we're at where we're set up and and even wendell you could hear it in the audio when wendell asked um the gentleman who was in charge is like is there any way to figure out like what the altitude is here and the guy's like no no we can't <laughs> and i mean for me i, I would have been i would have had an altimeter you know and i would have been getting those readings like immediately you know, these guys are supposed to be performing a scientific experiment. They don't even have like any, any kind of like legitimate equipment. Well, that's other because than, like, I believe and... they're so overly confident that Earth is a globe that they didn't need to prepare. It's just a bunch of stupid flat earthers out there. Right. Gotta be. Right. Yeah. Because... I mean, I think they figured they had it in the bag. You know? Yeah. It's like, oh, we won't be able to see anything until they're up in the air. So. If Jim Underdown and the rest of the skeptics group, if this is any indication on how all of their other debunks of uh, phenomena like ghosts and, you know, all of these other things it goes, I would imagine that everything they've debunked is probably true. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, I mean, there's definitely some supernatural stuff going on in this world. You know, I've yeah. had some stuff happen to me that's like, all right, that's not normal, you know. Right. But yeah, these... The, the, they were so confident, you know, when I met them, they're like, oh, we won't be seeing them until they're 36 feet up in the air. So it doesn't really even matter, you know. I mean, that's li like literally what they said. Like, I asked them, how high are you guys expecting the balloons to get before? And they're like, oh, we won't see them until 36 feet. And I'm like, oh, all right, we'll you see. You know, maybe <laughs> they had come out before and done the test, possibly, with, 
I, I, somehow, I have no idea, but it's funny that they picked that number. Well, they, on the other side with the P900, your, uh, Josh was able to see the balloons when they were on the ground. Yeah. And, and not only Josh saw them, but I saw them. <laughs> you can see in my video when he, I'm like about to hang up on him. He's like, oh, you, you can see him, right? And, and I stopped and I, and I look and I could just see him perfectly. I and mean, next to you, one of, the, uh, one of the guys from the skeptics group asked you what you were talking about. And tell, tell us what he said and about the camera and his feelings about using such a camera. Oh, yeah. So as I'm, I'm locating everything, um, that guy, David, is, he's kind of like creeping over my shoulder, like looking at what I'm doing. He's like, oh, what is he doing, man? And, and Wendell tells him, oh, he's, he's FaceTiming and his friend has a P, P900 on the other side. And he's trying to zero zero it in, and uh, and the guy's like P nine hundred. So it's probably not that great of uh, uh, what he said quality. He's like probably not that great quality, yeah. right? <laughs> and I just laugh. It's like because this guy doesn't know what a P nine hundred is. Like, yeah, and he says something like you said maybe it's digital, and told him the zoom capability. And yeah, when said, oh, yeah. it's digital. It's not real. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, so it's digital. Oh, okay, so it's not like real. Yeah, it's not, it, because it's digital in a P900, it, it's not able to determine curvature, I guess. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so then, you know, when, when we find them and the guys, the guys are standing like next to us and they're, they're like, wait, what? Like somebody, you have a friend over there that, that sees us? And I'm like, yeah, he's over there. Like, go tell your people to go find him, you know? And you can hear him on the phone and it's on speakerphone. It's so perfect. It's on speakerphone. And you, I have to, like, really kind of, like, you have to blow up the, or raise up the audio to hear it. But he says something, like, something along. He's like, what do you mean I can see it? There's curvature. They can't. <laughs> uh. and, and the guy's like, yeah, I know, but he sees it. Go over to him and, and tell him to point it out where it's at and zoom in there. <laughs> wow. Well, right there. Yeah. That the test, I mean, we know that the earth is not a globe and there's no curvature, yeah. but yeah. right there, they really pretty much admitted that there was no curvature. But still, they yeah. let the balloons go up, the heat caused the balloons to pop, but of course, they rose up to 40 what 40 some feet. Um, that's what Nat Geo said that they saw them when they were um 45 feet up in the air, right. Now, um, National Geographic and, was on the flat earther side and didn't know of any of the goings on about you and Josh across the way, seeing the balloons at, uh, you know, on the ground. So they were under the impression that when they got to that point of 40 feet up, that was the first time that they would be seen, thus proving curvature. So right. must have been frustrating for you as you made your, made your way back across the way. In fact, from what I remember, you were you were. You were halfway overjoyed about the fact that you'd, you know, debunk those, those pesky debunkers. But then when yeah. you realized the National Nat Geo people and the debunkers on the flat earthers side of the salt and sea were like, yeah, there's curvature. And the flat earthers were, you know, rightfully angry because we knew it had everything to do with the temperature of the day. Do you right. think that the debunkers waited strategically instead of launching at dawn, which is when we all pretty much got there, like we were like they were supposed to do they waited until it was like 7 seven thirty or something to start launching do you think that was done on purpose because they knew from watching our previous tests because there's a lot out there that that's when uh the visibility would be uh, uh lowered thus putting it in the globe's favor um you know the, like the more and more I, I think about it um the more i kind of do feel like that they might have like intentionally stalled or maybe they just put like the worst guy in charge of trying to get it located like purposefully or something just to try and get give them enough time um to to, to let the sun come out and get the heat done and everything um I, that's possible I, I don't know these guys but right, right i know i know that when i went up and and started talking to jim and saying like how are you guys like we you guys saw it when it was on the ground and he didn't did he like deny he, it? Did he lie? Or did he even he, know that it he, was? He didn't. He didn't deny it. He said, yeah, but your observer was at a higher altitude. And so that, so none of that even counts. And I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't count? Are you kidding me? Like, are, are, you, are you a scientist? All you have to do is take out the original numbers, 
plug in the new numbers and then you can get your your curvature you know in the the target height uh the target hidden height and you can figure it out super simple it's super easy and he's like no it just it just it doesn't count and he was just so um wouldn't even think reconsider i'm not, i told him like dude i'll pull my camera i'll pull my phone out right now i'll go to the website i'll do it right now you can see it so yeah I see it and oh, we were yeah. we were asking him to go look at the uh, Lake Balaton footage. He said that he wouldn't take any of that into consideration because we could have faked it, even if yeah. uh, uh, it was Guinness Book World of Records approved as the longest laser test, successful laser test. Oh my gosh! Um, on and on, and he was saying that we're not scientists. But the funny thing was is that we flat earthers, you specifically, and Josh and others, were able mm -hmm. to get their experiment done. They're the yeah. ones claiming to do a scientific experiment, but it took the flat earthers to actually make it happen. So yeah, frustrating. And, and Tempers were hot. Really the weather was hotter. Yeah. Um, and, and just, you know, a little thing, too, is that um, on my video, you can hear them confirming that they have eyes on the balloon. Yes. And if that's if those were the guys that were with uh, IG and they were the ones with the cameras, they were on the shoreline. They were there on the shoreline. And you can hear them say, hey, they're ready. They're ready. Because the, the gentleman, like when we located it, I asked the guy, like, should we... Should we let the balloons up? And he said, no, 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 don't let them up. We want to make Just sure wait they can see it. Till it gets hotter. <laughs> no, he said, no, he said, don't let them up. We want to make sure they can see it before we let them up. You know, make sure they find it so, so, so they know where to look. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, that's a good idea. And then, and then when <laughs> you can hear it uh, at the end of the video, uh, Wendell's walking back and he's talking to one of the, the blue shirt guys. The IIG saying, group, oh. the skeptics group. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's, I mean, we use FaceTime, and it's really cool. But then the audio in the background, you could hear the guy who's in charge says, uh, all right, ready to go. We're good. We're ready to go. They can see him. And then up, 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 and the balloons go up, and then the rest of the test was an absolute disaster. Except <laughs> before the test got underway, it was an absolute win, you know? It was, it, we, we killed it. And it's, well... We are so lucky to, even if all of us flat earthers already know that the earth is not a globe and there wouldn't have been curvature if it had, you know, there, there was no curvature. It was an optical yeah. illusion um, if there was due to the heat. We we're very mm -hmm. lucky to have had that video that you captured and, and, and Josh and, you know, the rest of oh, the people God. that were involved. So, wow, thank yeah. you. That, that video footage hopefully will get into the hands of National Geographic, who, because they were on the other side where the flat earthers are, were under the impression that there was indeed curvature. And we're hoping that the, uh, an hour-long program coming out sometime in October on the National Geographic channel is going to take into consideration your video and at yeah. least tell that side of the story. Yeah. Um, I hope so, too. I, I hope they do the right thing and don't you know omit that because it's really important that people know that that's actually what happened you know? exactly um, and um you know we all know national geographic is either on purpose or accidentally on the side of the globe and everything that has anything to do with the globe um they've had nasa and space imagery all over their magazine for decades so we know that they're not open really to the idea of a flat earth and they have uh, presupposed that it's a globe as most people have but I think they're a little bit more on the side of promoting the globe and definitely not neutral. So they yeah. may just disregard everything that you've, uh, yes. that you're passing along to them. But right. we, well, hoping, all we can do I'm is try. For, yeah, I'm hoping that once they know that we have this footage, that it, it'll almost be like having that bargaining chip. Like you can't say that we failed because we have this footage. And if they try and do that, and now that the, the footage is out, like people will know if they're trying to say it was a total failure because we have this footage out already. You know, I, and I think it would be unwise of them to try and skew it in a way where it was like a total failure when in reality it really wasn't. And, and we have, I mean, anybody could just go, like if you guys put it on your, mirror on your YouTubes or whatever, like you just go and see that that's actually what happened. Let everybody yeah. know your channel name because on your channel where you put this footage up, you've requested that anybody take it and mirror it and put it on their channel. Where can people go find that? Yeah. Um, so my channel's uh, Bipolar Flat Earth. It's B-I-P-O-L-A-R um, Flat Earth. And uh, you'll see the, I just, the last video that I posted is the one in the experiment. But um, I was wondering if I could share a, a really, really cool kind of like synchronicity 
as far as um, what happened and how I actually ended up on, on that side with the balloons. Please. I haven't, I haven't told you or Mark or anything, but um, so when I got there and Sasha told me like, hey, uh, you got to go to the other side. And I was super kind of bummed out, like, man, I'm going to be like the only one over there. I don't really want to do this, you know. I want to be with my friends. And, um, and I, I almost wanted to tell her no, like, you know, could you find somebody else? Like, I, I just want to be hanging out with you guys, you know, I don't want to be over there. But I, I kind of, she was like, I don't really trust anybody else. And so I didn't want, want to argue with her. So I was like, all right. But the whole time I'm just like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. So then she tells me, okay, go over this guy, Ross, and he'll tell you like where you need to go and, um, and what time you need to be there and everything. So I go over to him and meet him, and he starts showing me the map, and he's like, okay, um, you're going to go. There's this like jetty road thing right here, and um, that's where you're going to go. We need you there at 5 o'clock, 5.15 at the latest, because we're going to get started at 5.30. And, um, and he said that the, it, the jetty, it's, on a, it's the street, it's called Capri Road. And um, actually, my oldest daughter, her name is Capri. And um, so when I heard that, <laughs> I looked at my buddy Jason and I was like, uh, excuse me, what was that again? And he said, oh, it's Capri Road. And like immediately I just knew it was like. That's the sign. That was it. <laughs> I was like, all right. Okay, universe. All right. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to go. Without you there, <laughs> without you there, we wouldn't have this piece of, let's call it Intel. Um, against the uh, the IIG Independent Investigations Group, the skeptics, the blue shirts, they were all wearing blue polo shirts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. your daughter uh, done good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, Capri? Okay, all right, I got that. <laughs> I'll I'm be not going to argue. I'll, okay, let's just, I will do that. And so I just felt like from immediately from the get-go, because, I mean, you were asking me earlier, um, what did, why did I go out there? And, and I went out there because I, had this feeling like deep down inside that I had to be there and I couldn't miss like this opportunity to because I mean it, it, this could have potentially be like the next the next step of you know the the movement of, of people waking up is is this documentary and it has that potential um, and I just I knew I had to be there and plus it was, it's in California I'm, I live in Southern California and um I try and make it to, to like everything that we do that's flat earth, you know, all the meetups. Um, I've been going to the meetups since the very first one um, that Aaron Kreishock put on in LA um, in like early 2016. And um, I just, it's really important, you know, for all of us to go out into the real world and tell people in real life and, and not just be like a keyboard warrior and, and not be ashamed of it either because the more people who come out and are open about it and not ashamed of it and, and don't take it personal when, when you get made fun of and just keep, just keep putting the truth out there because every time that truth goes out there, it's going to go into somebody's head when you hear flat earth, it just gets buried in there. And whether you think it is or isn't like it's in there. So then when you hear about it again, it's like, it's still there. And then again and again and again, and I can't tell you how many people that, I told, you know, because there was like a whole year where I just went out and told everybody I possibly could, like in real life, everybody I worked with, you know, and, and all my friends and family. And then, and then I realized that's like, you know, going so hard like that, like talking about it all the time is like not really a good idea. And it's not very healthy because, <laughs> you know, you just end up arguing a lot. Right. Um, and so I stopped. And now it's, it's crazy because like people come up to me like, um, at my work, uh, just random employees are like, hey, I heard you, you think the earth is flat. Why do you think that? Or, or a coworker or a coworker of a coworker that heard about me and, and, know, and knew my face and saw me in, in a store and, and they're like, hey, what do you think? That? It's, it's crazy how many people approach me now because they keep hearing it and every, they're going to keep hearing it. And we need people that are out there that are not ashamed to speak about it and that know how to have a, a, a conversation and not be argumentative and not be aggressive, but listen to 
you know, listen to the questions. This is the basic questions because we all hear those same basic mm. questions all the time. Yeah, it's hard Where's not to be more? annoyed at them, but yet yeah, we have to be calm and remember where we used to be before we got where we are now. Exactly, exactly. And, and we all, I mean, everybody asks those same questions. So it's just, you know, if they ask the question, just answer it. It's simple. It's very simple. Answer it. And then, of course, they're going to ask another question, another question. But I think the real change is, is like people... I'm um, talking about it. Oh, and I want to tell you guys too. Um, Josh, uh, my buddy who uh, who was the one that was had the P900 on the other side of the observation side. We're getting a lot of questions about these experiments. You know, everybody wants to know what the exact type of the observer was and, and the exact type of the balloons when they were on the ground and everything because and nobody wants to believe it, you know, because the Earth can't possibly be flat, you know. And, um, and so... Me and Josh, um, we're going to uh, go back and we're going to replicate the experiment. Oh, yes. Yes. At night. We're going to do it at night. We're going to yes. do it 10 times better than, than IIG did it. We're going to document every piece of information. We're going to have altimeters. We're going to have re the barometric pressure, windage, temperature. It's all going to be documented. We're going to destroy it and, and put you know, just put it to rest right there. And then we're not going to stop there. We're going to keep doing it. And he, we want to do one like every month and, and we want to do it publicly and invite everybody to come out and, and see these experiments in Including real life. Including IIG, the skeptics group, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, hey, you guys did it last time. It's our turn. And you guys can come watch this and see how it's done. Right. <laughs> we'll show you how to do exactly. a real side of the experiment. Well, the way you're talking with the uh, barometric pressure, et cetera, and, and the time and the exact mm -hmm. measurements, that's very much like uh, FE core did mm -hmm. their Lake Valaton experiment and mm -hmm. how they hopefully will do other experiments in the future. Having yeah. that information is a, a far cry from what IIG did. And that yeah. makes it a real scientific experiment. And they, exactly. the IIG people should, should definitely learn and take note. Uh, when do you think you're going to do that? When uh, we, already we, have the date. Um, we already have the date. We're already getting it um, set up. We're getting hotels. We're getting everything prepared. We, we're buying all the equipment right now. Uh, it's going to be the end of this month on the 27th and the 28th. Okay. We're going back. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming up with that idea and doing it. And, uh, you know, thank you for being here on the show. Uh, once yeah. again, it's Nathan Gonzalez and his channel is by Polar Flat Earther. It'll be linked in the description box of this video. Feel free to find the video that he has there about the salt and sea and share it on your channel. You've got Nathan's permission. The more eyes on it, the better. Nathan, we uh, yeah. hope to see you again soon. I know we will. That's how, that's how it works in the flat earth. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome getting to meet you guys and see you guys and do this with you. I, I yeah, really it was that. awesome. You uh, are a big guy, but you're very gentle and soft-spoken, and I really like that about you. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. All talk right. to you later. Um, okay. Thanks, Patricia. Bye, Nathan. See you, Mark. How's it going? Well, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be joined by uh, uh, somebody that we both know. Um, we kind of know him as uh, as Josh Uber, <laughs> Uber Flat Earth. He drives an Uber, and he was there as well. So he's going to pop on in just a second or two. I want to give a shout out to somebody that Nathan mentioned, Sasha Isaac Young. Um, and uh, Sasha Isaac Young wrote me just earlier today, and not knowing that Nathan was going to mention her, she was saying, uh, you know, hey, uh, thank you, nice meeting you at the event. And I was typing while Nathan was talking, typed at her and said an email and said, hey, um, thank you so much for coming out. It was great meeting you. And by the way, you're being mentioned right now on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And she said, I I'll tune in. Thank you. She said, I assigned Nathan the job of being on the other side. I'm so proud of all of us. It's all so amazing. So shout out to Sasha Isaac Young as well. Um, so we're going to have um, Uber uh, Flat Earth on in a couple of moments. And that's not the Josh with the P900 that Nathan was mentioning. Oh, and there he is now. Hello. How are you, Josh? Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going, Patricia? What's up, Mark? Hey, man. Well, why don't, Mark, you take the lead now? Let me give me a chance to get some breath here. And why don't you guys uh, chat a little bit about uh, being at the Salton Sea, everything that you saw, Josh, everything that you felt. And um, what do you think that National Geographic is going to do with this information that they've got? 
you want me to lead on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think, Josh? But yes, Mark, as well. Go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. Fire, <clears throat> fire us out there. Well, as far as Net Geo, I'm pretty sure everyone there can agree that they were very biased about things. Just in the way that they argued things. Like, everybody that was not a flat earther that was there was a complete Glover. Even the, the skeptic team was not very skeptical like of their own beliefs that they already held uh i mean there's a bunch of footage that was uh caught from different live streams like with rob and jaren uh i was on poncho pete's uh i think lucy i think lucy might have streamed for a little while uh but there was tons of conversation going on and I feel like they're not going to put stuff like that in there where we were destroying them on every point, except for where we already told them they screwed up on the experiment because right. everybody already knew that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, it was, it, it was definitely oh, like it has been online so far. It was very, very polarizing. There were the flat earth groups and then there were the other groups. And even though we outnumbered them, neither side was going to give an inch and the the blue shirts they were absolutely yeah you know, they were they were more wary of us they didn't want to really hang around us much national geographic they were just there to do the job you know they were there just to shoot the footage and and do whatever they could with it and then there were some independent news teams as well which was which was interesting to see and they seemed to be a little more open than national geographic but like patricia mentioned earlier no surprise national geographic has been a huge backer of science and the space program ever since it was uh, created back in 1958 so yep so when you when when did you first roll in there you know there was there was it, we had at least 30 flat earthers there which was amazing considering the time in the morning when did you and and the, we're, then the remoteness of the destination. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For people, again, who don't know what we're talking about, the Salton, Salton Sea, look it up. It is two hours plus east of Los Angeles. You are going into the desert, past Palm Desert, past Palm Springs, past Indio. And it is almost equal distance once you get there to San Diego as it is to Los Angeles. And it is hot. It was 105 degrees there the day before. It only got down to 70 during the evening and the the temperature was was rising rapidly so when i first of all first of all thank you so much for for showing up man i i know you're not necessarily an early early riser sometimes but you were you were out there with bells on dude it was it was a blast uh i got there a little bit after like 5 30. Mm -hmm. when i first pulled up i pulled up on the other side of the lake actually yeah, oh, so many people then, did. We got yeah. on the wrong, we got to the wrong side. We didn't know where to go and everyone was calling each other because right. it wasn't our tests. We didn't organize it. The skeptics did and they didn't right. have a meeting point. They just said be there at dawn. So, right. Yeah, uh, and you were talking about the other crews, the film crews that were out there. Mm -hmm. I actually got to talk to, uh, what was their name? Um, we Got You Media. Was that the one in the, in the with that little van that uh, they were? Yeah, uh, in the far yeah, yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't. Even, I didn't even talk to them. They were interesting, man, because as I was talking to them, they were asking like legit questions about flat Earth, not arguing, asking like, right. like, what are you guys seeing that we're not? You know, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because. I have a clip on my, that I got off of Poncho's channel, right? Cause I chopped out the whole section of where I was talking to everyone. Right. And when I was talking to these guys, I was still on Poncho's and their cameraman came up to me and starts talking to me about how bad they're screwing up on the experiment and starts explaining exactly what's happening with the perspective, with the, with the, uh, with all the with all the different conditions, man, it was yeah. Uh, it, it was just it was it was wide out there how bad they were screwing up, and I. So talking with Sydney, um, and I think I told you that Sydney's actually the girl that 
started the experiment. Like she's, it was her idea. Right. Apparently she was in the meeting with those guys at IIG. She pitched it as she just wanted somebody to look over her test to like, kind of like peer review it. So it had legitimacy. Right. And then when she handed it to them, it kind of took on its own deal. Yeah. Yeah. It took its and own it life. Blew up. Yeah. To where Ross, who you met, uh, the, the smallest of the blue shirts, he, he contacted me and said, Hey, we're doing this test out there here. Would you like to come? And I said, no, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a suck test. And everybody knows that you don't want to shoot this during the day. It's going to be awful. And plus, the, I mean, it was out in the middle of, as you know, in the middle of freaking nowhere on, at the edge of a dead sea. And then yep. I still wasn't going to do it. And then if, a little bit later, that's when National Geographic was just kind of looking for projects. and But they wanted to be tied to Flat Earth. And I said, okay, well, there's something in L.A. Uh, you know, out there, I'm still not going. But they can contact you guys, you know, the L.A. teams out there. Maybe, maybe you guys will show up, right? And then they said, no, 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 we want you to come in and, and let's turn this into a, a whole weekend thing where you know, there's a meetup and, and all this other fun stuff. It's like, all right. And so, uh, funny enough, yeah, the test ended up being my least favorite part of the entire <laughs> trip. Everything else I loved, but the test was just awful, mostly because it drug out. That Because the, the IIG team was so underprepared that it took way longer than it should have not only did they not start on time and if they had it would have been over really quickly but the the second part the raft part was was like a root canal i mean it just took forever for them to get that thing going <laughs> it's awful but that was so horrible that was so bad oh i okay i felt bad for the guy uh i'm gonna screw his name up again uh nathan's oh nathan's friend, friend. uh was it James? I think it could it have been James. Jason. J Jason, maybe the he guy, the kid that was in the Jason. raft. Anyway. Yeah, dude, I kept I kept confusing his name with Jason James the whole day. I felt so bad, man. I felt so bad. Uh, uh, how do you think? I, I I kept I kept calling Marietta Marietta, the the late the lady from National Geographic. It's like, <laughs> I, and I didn't do it to her face, but I'm sure somebody mentioned it to her. Marietta but. Trench, Mariana Trench. It was Marietta, impossible to remember even a, that sort of a trip a, on your mind. Uh, it's awful. Anyway, so what uh, did you had a chance to speak with a number of the blue shirts? What what was your general impression? Uh oh, he's frozen. And now you don't have any sound. I've got sound now. Uh, Josh, if you can hear us, just come back with the same link. Something happened, yeah. I guess. Um, by the way, I just want everybody to know that uh, Josh Walker is not to be confused with Joshua Vale, who is the one that Nathan was speaking of earlier, who had the P900 on the other side. There's right. several Nathans in Flat Earth and several right. different Joshes in Flat Earth. Um, now, so. the video that I just released just before the show came on, and you guys- I'll link, link that in the description box, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is uh, very important. And the footage was taken by Wendell, who was out there with Nathan, who we just talked to, out on the target side during the long distance test. And they just happened again to accidentally, because we remember we, the Flat Earth si community members, weren't supposed to be part of this test in any way, shape, or form. And the, the part that they caught was damning, whereas they could not, again, because they were underprepared, they couldn't even figure out how to start the test because they didn't know where their team was on the other side. You know, it's, it's a common mistake. It's, that's JV ball. And you're, you're looking and you're looking and you have no idea. And so we finally stepped in because it was getting late and said, okay, let's, let's do what we can here. And during that process, it was caught on camera that, oh, yeah, we found the target, which was on the beach, told them, and that's how they found it. And so if anyone ever talks to those guys, say, okay, tell us how you found the balloons in the first place. How did you know where your team was? It's because the FE group told them. That's how. Anyway, sorry, Josh, you're back. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I actually ended up getting a phone call right now from I That's have okay. no idea who. But so, uh, speaking of footage and speaking of the other news crews and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, I just got a message from Sasha. 
Uh, you remember Sasha, right, Mark? Yeah. Uh, okay. She said, I talked to Gotcha Media just now, gave them footage from the other side. They are super nice and said they already have intended to use it. Oh, in their production? So, yeah. So at least it's going to be out there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I mean, hope Nat Geo would use it. Well, yeah, I, that's and, the most important thing because that's a one-hour TV program. Not that any of us in Flat Earth care about TV programs or Nat Geo, but we're talking about getting the masses to see it. Ten, ten minutes before this show went on air, I was informed by the producer, Justin, who Patricia and I both met, that they have it now. And I and I told him, I go, look, in the end, you're gonna have you can do with it what you want, but just know that we have this, and we will have we have a huge head start. We will have to at least two month head start on them. So if they come out and make a piece and say, oh yeah, it absolutely proved blah blah blah, we're just gonna sh shoot that video out to anyone that wants to listen. Say okay, here you go. But it was it was obvious. You know, again, I, I said this many times. I'll say it again now. Flat Earth doesn't do tests during daytime over water anymore because of the heat distortion. And for those who still don't know what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is when you go and any photographer will tell you this, you, you shoot down the length of a hot road, the hot asphalt, and you can see a car disappear in under a mile because of the heat distortion that's coming off that road. No different on the water. You shoot any length of water and the heat's bouncing off that thing, it is going to do that, which is why at the end of the video that I put out there, which I just released called uh, Flat Earth Skeptic, I'm sorry, Salt and Sea Skeptic uh, Target Footage, at the end, I put the Skunk Bay footage, which Jaron and Rob Skiba and others have mirrored, which shows you what happens during the day. And that was, you know, that was an average temperature day, you know, 50 degrees to almost 70 degrees, a little 20 degree swing there, time lapse. And it, that, it was not a flat earth video, but when they showed the horizon, you could see the water level varying in height because of the distortion waves. I do have to add something. I had a number of people in the live chat because I just checked it saying they went to, um, to Nathan Gonzalez's channel, Bipolar Flat Earth, and bipolar is run together as one word, and they couldn't find the video, which I watched earlier today mm. uh, when he was uh, talking on the phone across the way. I wonder if that's been taken down for some reason. Yeah. Um, so maybe Nathan can message me at, uh, on Facebook and let me know where that video now is. So. You can always look on mine. I right. even put I even put subtitles interspliced between certain segments just to give people perspective. It's like, okay, here's what's happening here. Here are the players involved, and here's how things progress. And it culminates in a part again where our guy from the state park side saw the balloons on the ground, and I, you know, and I feel bad for for Nathan because I was wondering why he was so upset when he finally got over to our side. Yeah, because we didn't know. On yeah, our we side didn't know. It's like, happening. what's he all worked up about? And then it's like, holy crap, that's why. It's because the test was over before it began, meaning we found it, and we were standing right there, you know, on the beach between them. And they can say, oh, no, you were elevated. It's like, fine, if we were elevated, you know, the highest point of that state park side was up at the picnic tables, and that was only another maybe seven, eight feet maybe. And the point was that test would have never happened without us because we were the ones that saw the balloons first with our cameras and told them. And then they just dragged their feet until they couldn't see the beach anymore. And that's when they pointed National Geographic over and says, look, look what we can't see. It's like, really, really, man, because we could see it the whole time. Right, right. Um, the video that Mark is talking about that will have part of Nathan Gonzalez's video in it is on his channel currently as of June 13th, 2018. And the name of said video is Flat Earth Salt and Sea Skeptics Test Target Side Video. And it's about 11 minutes long. So yeah. and, I'll put that and, in and here. It's, it's all of Nathan's video in there, of course. Uh, all, all six minutes of it. And then the last four minutes is the Skunk Bay time lapse. Again, just to show people, and I meant I meant I built that thing really for National Geographic, because I I want to say, okay, look, here's what happened over there, and here's why you never ever ever wait for it ever shoot daytime, time, you know, um, uh, curvature tests over water. You cannot do it. Not not if the weather is warm at all. I mean, yeah, I suppose you could shoot it up in Minnesota in in January, but any other body of water that has any heat fluctuations, no, you can't.
We might have lost uh, we might have lost Josh Walker because I, I do see, see his, his icon, but I don't see icon, the man. I don't see him. Josh, if you were no, there. I'm still here. Okay, I'm still cool. Here. I just turned off my camera for a second. And that image that we're looking at is not as attractive as you, so bring you back. <laughs> what is that picture? <laughs> <laughs> that is um Okay, so on Poncho's channel like last week, we were messing around with uh, monkey images with Photoshop and stuff, and everyone had like monkey icons. And so that is Stephen Hawking with a retarded monkey photoshopped over his face wow. with his teeth and his headset. So horrifying. <laughs> thanks Absolutely for telling me. Horrifying. <laughs> okay, thanks. One of the scariest photos I've ever seen in my life. Well, one good thing about the Salton Sea experiments, the bonding and the fraternity between all the flat earthers, meeting you, Josh, meeting everybody, and just hanging out. It's all you know, it's always a great feeling. It was awesome getting to meet everyone. Uh Rob Skiba, getting to meet you finally. Uh <laughs> Mark met you last year, so not that that doesn't matter, but you know. Oh no, it's okay, man. I'm I'm not hurt. That's fine. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, that and dude, I talk to you like every week. <laughs> yeah, I know. We I know we we're we we talk after after Strange World pretty much every week now. So it's not that that not that huge big a deal. But the meetup, meet, having you at the meetup was great. Yeah. It was probably the it was the best meetup I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, almost a hundred people there, yeah. and that was in Arcadia, and we no, went actually Netta for putting it together. There was there was over a hundred people there. Really? Nice. At what? At about six thirty, I counted like ninety people. Wow! Amazing. It was awesome. It was a successful meetup, and Netta, uh, who put it together, her brother was involved in that too. Um, uh, Dan, the waterman, uh, helped uh, get the model made by Chris Pontius there, one of his largest, most deluxe models yet, to yeah. be on display. CBS News was there. Um, and you know, obviously National Geographic and all of our flat earth friend you groups. Didn't, you didn't have to worry about uh, restaurant permits or anything like that. It, the, the venue was perfect. The weather was perfect. Uh, aesthetically, I, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And everybody that shot it said, oh, yeah, got everything they wanted and more out of it. Yeah. And everybody that was yeah. there felt the same way. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a good time. And so, as always, I encourage people, if there's a meetup in your area, go and if there's no meetup in your area make one and if you don't feel that That's anybody great. will come just message mark and mark will make a promo yeah. for your meetup in your town um you know timbuktu arkansas wherever it is at the no tell motel bar perfect get the information to mark and he'll put a put a little video together for you and that'll get yeah. a little more interest in it and you know you do your best on your social media and you'll have you'll have minimum 20 people there really you know and it's, it's a good thing you know? Yeah. Yep. And real quick, guys, uh, to give you a heads up, trying to get like a debate with those skeptic guys with the IIG team. Uh, kind of wasn't my idea. It was Sydney's idea, but it seems like a decent idea. Could be potentially. Although you got to remember, not, no offense to anyone in particular, but that particular that skeptics group specializes in anti-paranormal, you know, uh, phony psychics and phony fortune tellers and people that say yeah. that they can talk to ghosts and those those type of people. I would, I would also like to tear them up about that one as well. Yeah, that's what uh, Nathan a little while ago Gonzalez said. He said he's had some paranormal, if you want to call it, experiences himself. Dude, um, I've had times where I was looking for something in my pocket, like a normal, just jean pocket, right? Like, and it would be a, something like good size, like a lighter or something like that, right? And there's not much in my pocket, and yet I could search my pocket for forever looking for it and just give up on it eventually. And then like two hours later, I'll reach into my pocket for something different, and the first thing I grab is my lighter. Like... Uh, stuff, stupid stuff like that, where it almost seems like somebody's messing with you, like they're hiding stuff from me for a second. Right. Uh, most of the time, I just chalk it up to uh, I'm an idiot. But 
I mean, that can't be all the time. Well, no. <laughs> no, man, I have a ghost that co consistently uh, ha ha makes me have a hard time screwing on the tops of jars. Yeah, uh, no. Mark told me about that. And he literally can't screw, he's told me, a jar, you know, a threaded jar, the lid a on a jar. threaded lid. I can't now, do it the first time. Now, he told me that, and I thought, well, that's ridiculous. And then guess what happened to me? Yep. Now I can't do it because no, I'm thinking about it. And every jar I try to close, I don't get it till the third try. Yeah. Now, everybody watching the show, watch it yourself yeah. when try you try it. to screw a lid yeah. on a jar. It won't work. And yeah. that has nothing to do with Thank paranormal. Ghosts, but it's just a weird <laughs> thing. I think it's more like a virus that you're spreading, I, I think it is a virus it's <laughs> it's because i don't know why it happens and it ticks me off i mean we're not talking i mean like five six times i'm just sitting there it's maybe like, it's a, why? maybe it's another flat earth proof and we just don't even know it <laughs> could be could be well uh josh walker uber flat earth the name of the channel thank you for coming on i appreciate it He's frozen again. He's frozen. <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. Perfect. Thank excellent. you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. We'll see you next time. Good <laughs> night, everybody. No, all right. So, um, oh, yeah. that was cool. Yeah. That was fun. I'm going to eject him. I think okay. that'll work. Eject. eject. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fun weekend. Yeah, uh, and we got a little presence as well. I want to show mine first. Uh, yeah, you want to show yours first? Okay. So, there's a guy that we met at the meetup that Netta organized, the Flat Earther meetup, is the second one, I think, maybe the second one she's done, maybe she's done more. Yeah. Um, and his name, well, he goes, his name is Woody. And he has a company called Woody Waves Woodworth. And he takes photographs of various things. Right. And he puts them in packages and he sells them in stores around the area where he lives. And um, he mostly is into surfing. And, you know, like Woody Wagons, uh, the Beach Boys surfing and that sort of thing. He's been doing this sort of surf photography since 1972. And right. if you want to uh, look at what he's got yourself, you can go to creationcaptured.com, creationcaptured.com. Okay. Anyway, so he sells these envelopes with these uh, two beautiful 12 by 18 full color prints of whatever images are on the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it comes like this. And then inside, I'll open it right here. Probably gonna rip the photograph open. Uh, are these gorgeous photos that he takes? But there's more to it than just the gorgeous photos, which I'll, which is the most important part, I think. Somehow, um, there we go. Here's one of them. This is a beautiful golden wave. Look how gorgeous that is. Yep, it's a great shot. Yeah. Okay, that's one. And you got different ones than I, got. I. I've got I got one here, same sort of wavy thing. Mine is blue, standard blue wave. These look like uh, paintings, actually, but actually yeah. they're photos. Yep. And then we've got this here too, sort of a uh, restaurant on a pier, yeah. which is really pretty. I've got a pier too. I like my pier better than yours. Yours is lit in the evening, but yes. gorgeous as they are, and skilled as he is as a photographer, he's taken a risk. And it's all for the good of flat earth on the very back of these envelopes right that he sells himself from his website and also he distributes to various stores around where he lives so people will just go in and buy them he's got lists of truths about flat right. earth yep memes information there's, about there's a lot of info on the back so of much stuff. i mean it's it's deep info and yep. if you're a person who wants to make money which everyone does, I guess. That's the society we live in. You don't put this stuff on the back of your material. Nope. He's even said stores say to him, hey, I love your work, man, but can you take all this flat earth stuff off the back? It's not going to work. And he said, right. no, this is my creation. This is what I want to put out there in the world. And so that's what he's done. So he needs support. If you want a wonderful photograph in perfect condition, ready for fl uh, framing, not flaming, framing, uh, creationcaptured.com. Flaming is something else. Yeah, it is. All right. So uh, thank you, Woody, for giving us those. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Also, we received some books, some books that were found by a flat earther who stopped off at uh, the, or didn't stop off, who was a part of the Arcadia meetup. Right. And, and these are National Geographic Society books. Now, National Geographic Society is known to, where most people think, putting out beautiful, photography about the world we live on but of course 
not when you see this. It's called Orbit, this book. It's an older book. Um, and she's, uh, this is NASA astronauts photograph the Earth. And we've got a bunch of, you know, globes in here and basic CGI and total paintings. Right. You know, obviously, these uh, Woody's photographs put these paintings to shame. But it is very interesting to look at. And, uh, you know, all the, these books are very interesting. It's from a more innocent time. Right. And um, the commander of Apollo 8, the first mission to orbit the moon, has a quote on the back of this. I'll read it. A magnificent testament to what we see and feel from space. Earth so splendid. Earth so fragile. Right. Make me want to throw up. To yeah. <laughs> and, and don't forget that National Geographic has been tied to the space program right. just, just there. I mean, you got Apollo 8. The Paul Way astronaut signing off on that book, whenever it was. I got uh, not a National Geographic book, but something similar called Space Shots, The Beauty of Nature Beyond Earth, a smaller version of what you had. Mm -hmm. I don't think the forward was done by an astronaut because Nat Geo is the only thing people that can call them up and say, hey, write the forward to our book. You know, somebody might say, why would you even go to the Salton Sea experiment or even talk to National Geographic? They're 100% biased for the globe. And not only that, they're... Um, they're tied in with the globe in such a way that they're shilling for the globe, maybe without, maybe some without knowing it and some at the top by knowing it. Right. Well, you know, if we didn't go to the Salton Sea experiments, all the National Geo people would have seen would be the skeptics group saying, ah, obviously, curvature proven. We were there to be the counterpoint to it all, to right. tell the truth. And if we hadn't been there, we wouldn't have had a chance to get that word out there. So that's why we decided to speak to the media. And we know by speaking to the media, they will chop and change things we say. They may play clown music under us as we speak. We don't know what they'll do. But right. we know that all of us who went to the Salton Sea experiment and were caught on camera and all of us who were there at the meetup, we're, we're just being ourselves and with the best of intentions. So. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see in October when that Nat Geo show comes out. I get, yeah, they are going to, let, let's, <laughs> I will make a prediction. <laughs> they are not going to surprise me in the least because no. I, again, it's a heavy, heavy space technology science based group. Right. It's plain and simple. I mean, I'm not saying they're popular mechanics or popular science, but in their field, they might as well be. And uh, the correspondent, the, the team that we were with were there just to shoot the footage and send it back. The final editing will be done by the New York studios. Yes, they, that's the bad part because the yeah. New York studio people doing the final editing weren't there. They didn't right. capture the emotions of the flat earthers. They didn't feel the, the feelings, the heat. They didn't smell the dead fish. Right. Uh, they didn't understand what was going on with the temperature and the true facts about that kind of experiment and how it can't be done in that situation over such a warm body of water. But so. what, what they did capture, though, was the enthusiasm. And yes. the Flat Earth community represented itself admirably. Sure did. However, they may just see us as a bunch of enthusiastic kooks, which is why many who were there, including Nathan Thompson and Earth Aaron, Aaron Kreshock, and the gentlemen who were on here today, and many others were uh, trying as much as possible to be calm and get on camera in front right. of National Geographic talking to the blue shirts, the, the IIG skeptics team. So right. some of that hopefully will be captured by Nat Geo and, and put into their uh, hour long program, which with commercials probably will be 30 minutes of footage. And that will include the meetup too. So, right. um, you know, I hope they just don't put uh, everyone having fun at the meetup and then the balloons 40 feet up, Done and dusted. And, and, and if it's, they a, do, it's a globe. If they do, we can call them on it. And if anyone th from there is listening or anyone from any other group, if you burn us after we've shown you what really happened, good luck getting anyone from the community to talk to you about anything because you can't be trusted at that point. Well, was, at that point, they wouldn't want to talk to the community because in their minds, case closed. Oh, no, you never, no. you never know. I mean, they might want to you know, dr dredge us up again. Who, who knows? But either way, which is why I sent that the footage that Nathan and Wendell put together uh, almost immediately to, to National Geographic, and I said, "Look, here's what happened." I spelled it out for him, and here's an example of why we don't do the test like this. And 
The day after the test, you and I went out uh, at the hotel to breakfast with the main guy who was doing the photography yeah. uh, for National Geographic. Actually, it was Monday before we left. Excuse me, Monday before we yeah. left. Yeah. Um, we went out to breakfast with him and talked to him a little bit, talked about the what really happened, right. the stuff he didn't get to see on the other side, and, and um, hopefully some of that would convince him. But then again, he has no say-so. He's just handing over his raw footage to somebody back in New York to put it together. Yeah. So... No, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. You absolutely were right. Jeez, yeah, I, I lost I track. Thought I was. The, the problem. The problem. You were. You were right. That we had an extra day that was that was basically just us on the day after the meetup. So we had a kind of a buffer day, which turned into one of the more interesting days I've had. Uh, and we we can't we, even we, talk about it. We can't even talk about it on we air. Can, oh, we can only, talk very vaguely. Only that I can say that the Flat Earth community is bigger and stronger and more diverse than you had any idea. And I'll say we were, due to a Facebook post I made, contacted by somebody quite intelligent and very well known, let's just say famous. And yeah. we went to that person's house and spent several hours there. Yeah. And they turned out to be into all of the same things all of us are into. Yeah. Into things like chemtrails, into 9-11 truth, into flat earth. Yeah. And they let us know that there are others within the world that he is in and his wife that are also the same. And yeah. we're talking a name that everybody would know. Everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah everybody knows. He didn't even ask us not to talk about it. But no. talking about it would be name droppy and also violate the unspoken uh, agreement that we had as privileged guests in his home. Yeah, yeah, but, and, but it's the closet flat earther. It is, yeah, and and remember, remember what we've talked about for a couple of years now. Most of the community is our closet flat earthers. So they if are. there's famous people, not like people like Bob, no. but famous people that are way well, well more, well more known, more well known than more. him, <laughs> person would be, um, and maybe more credible in some cases. Sure. Um, then there's where there's one, there's ten. You oh, know, yeah. there's a lot and not it just is. famous people who cares about famous people. There's yeah. closeted flat earthers who are oh, bicycle let me, let food me, delivery guys or let me, uh, whatever. Let me, tell, let me tell that quick story that happened on Sunday after the meetup. Oh, even, of course. Even though the meetup was, oh, I'm sorry, after the meetup, after the test, because even though the test was torturous, at least the, we were out of there by noon. And if I was like one, I was the last guy to leave. And it was I was so out. Hot. I had to go sit in the car with the air conditioning running after several hours. I was going to. Oh, I don't blame you. I I would have been there too, but I couldn't because I was mic'd up, and I I they kept bringing me into things. I was like, ah, oh, no, no more. Anyway, so <laughs> why are you making us suffer? The well, Earth yeah. is not a globe. <laughs> and and they had me wear my black Mark Sergeant T-shirt, which uh, you know peanut gallery sent to me just before. So not only was it black, it was extra black. It was brand new. It hadn't even been washed yet. So it was soaking up all that wonderful California sunshine and I'm making sweat. me feel like utter crap. Mm. So, uh, so remember in the documentary or, or in people have heard me say other things where uh, I've met people in different cities and different States that just out of the blue, you know, meet, you know, say that they're flat earthers, like the security guy that worked for um, uh, Homeland in, uh, uh, or the, the, geez. the bag Here's checker the, guy, bag, bag checker guy in, in Atlanta airport or the bartender that was in uh, the, at that hotel next to the hotel bar. And so here we are, right. Thinking, Oh, I, got, I now I can finally go somewhere. And all there was even after all that flat earth madness and all the test stuff, there were still 15 flat earthers that banded together and went to a vegan restaurant in Palm Yay, Springs. Vegans. Yeah, went to a Palm Springs. <laughs> and Lucy Lemons drove me there of all things. It's like, well, how cool was that? And because uh, she waited for me, she was the last one to wait for me. And we drive there, and uh, someone and, we're, and I sit down with all these flat earthers, and and she's like looking around, and I can't remember who went up to the counter first. But going over the counter and the, the cashier was looking at us real intently. Like, it's like, what's going on over there? It's like flat earth. And she looks at, she looks at us at our table and she does this, you know, right away. It's like, are you serious? She goes, yeah. And so, other people saw this. Yeah. Oh yeah. The whole, uh, yeah. All of us saw it. They were like, yeah. You know, we started cheering and it was like Rob Skiba went over there and talked to her and uh, it was really, really cool. And she and her boyfriend had both been into it. There's our, so to your point, there are flat earthers in every walk of life. 
everywhere. You're walking by them every day and you don't know it until that, you know, that fateful day when all of a sudden the scales tip and people, and you know, what's going to happen where people like do it. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm into that. It's like, really? It's like, how long you been in five months? Oh man, I was in it nine months or whatever it is. I mean, <laughs> or there's and, the people that say they've been a flat earther for seven to 10 years. And then you look at them, what's your name? And then they tell you that you're their name and you're like, well, I never heard of you. <laughs> and you wonder, exactly. hmm. well, yeah, it's such a, <laughs> I mean, it's such a new community by comparison, but our little, carpet bagger? <laughs> the little thing that we went to at the end of Saturday, Saturday night, that thing you and I went to, I validated pretty much everything I'd said about the, the law of averages immediately because you know, the stories we were hearing is like, yep, I knew it. I knew that flat earth was everywhere because it's it it uh, flat earth doesn't discriminate no one is immune to the flat earth grapevine where so people but because flat earth is such a cool little gossip topic when you're when you're trying to tell people interesting things yeah that's what happens to people all the time right it's like hey did you know that happens in so many conversations and that's what it's apparently it's everywhere and hopefully soon we'll find out how everywhere it is Mm, well, day by day, it's revealing itself. Day by day. Um, I want to let everybody know that this Sunday is the return of Globusters, but now on a channel called Globusters 2 because of an unfair community guidelines strike or something. So now the Globusters 2 channel is the one to be subscribed to. And uh, Sunday, June 17th, it will be the debut of a new season with Ira Landucci and Bob and Jaren and the Morgal off and on, sometimes Eero, sometimes Morgal, sometimes all four guys. Right. And so check that out and Globusters returns. So congratulations to Bob and the crew for that. I right. do want to say a very special shout out to Stephen Chess. It is his birthday today. So happy birthday, Stephen. Happy birthday, Stephen. Thanks for stealing my ride. So I had to <laughs> hang out at the Salt Stephen and, and I uh, took off and went to a different vegan restaurant and left you to fend for yourself Took at the my Salton rental sea. car and said, see ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, no worries. It's only 90 degrees and climbing. No, no it worries. was because I was running the AC. You know, this was toward the very end of everything while we were kind of just waiting, yeah. waiting to leave kind of. Uh, and it was really hot. And I was running the AC and we were starting to run out of gas. So I'm thinking, right. well, I could go get gas and be nice and cool in the car <laughs> and not uh, pass out. Yeah. And Steven was more than willing to drive, so. I was gonna tell you that if anyone sees me re-uploading things over the next few days, mm. I will be, <laughs> because when I, uh, nothing serious. It's just when I was in Canada do, making videos up there, I couldn't use, I didn't have the same tools, the same editing tools. And you were in Canada it. because you had a Canadian girlfriend, you were living there for a while. I did, I had, people don't know. I had a Canadian girlfriend. Otherwise, I had a case of the not gays. And that's a little movie inside joke. <laughs> okay, because I had a girlfriend. So, uh, I, was it a case or is it a lingering case? I thank you. Thank you. It's awesome. Again, flaming. Mm. You know, so, I was uh, making videos uh, with tools I didn't normally use. And because of that, I was using a lot more of my QA videos as filler instead of slides. And one of those videos has now been either changed owners or whatever, and now they're saying nobody can use it, which means those uh, I've got at least three Strange World uh, episodes which are blocked in 200 and something countries. So it's like, great, fantastic. So I have to, luckily, I, I have all the archives up at uh, Truth Frequency Radio. So I just grab the audio, I throw it into the new slideshow, and then I put it up and I have to, but it still takes like 30, 40 minutes to do each one. So if you see you know, all these Strange World, why is Strange World 85 and 84 and 89? Why is that? Well, it's because... I had to re-upload them because you can't view them anymore. And I hate that mm. I'm kind of anal that way to where I, I hate, you know, I'm not going to leave it up there if it's blocked because then people are just going to email me and say, hey, it's blocked and that's going to bug me. So they're kind of a long way around to say that I'm not doing it to be weird or anything. And I will leave the re-upload next to it in the title so you guys don't think that I'm trying to do it for the hits because I'm losing because I have to kill the original. So I'm going to lose, I don't know, 10,000, 12,000 a hit mm. a video. Yeah. But I, I don't care. It happens. It happens. But I do hey, want to uh, say hello to everybody in the live chat. Oh, did I interrupt you? Go ahead. What we? No, 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 no. You go ahead. Go All ahead. right. Um, hello to Arwin and celebrate truth. Celebrate truth. Robbie D just joined us, and you know, Mark, you and I haven't. At least I don't know about you, but I haven't 
reserved my hotel for Edmonton yet. Have yeah, you? I know. Okay, I, let's yeah. do it right after. Not that we, we're not getting the same hotel room, we'll, but let's we'll just like we'll vow to do it tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do it tonight. Vowing I'll, to do I'll it. call you and we'll, we'll do it. I, uh, I promised Robbie, and I've already promised him a few times. I, I, I took me longer than I thought to catch up from this trip. Because oh, yeah. It was a lot because I don't bring lap. And eventually, I'm going to have to start bringing laptops to things. Yeah. Uh, when I got back, one, I was I had lost a lot of sleep, ton of sleep. <laughs> and two, there was just a lot of media to catch up on. Plus, we had to deal with the whole IIG thing which is you know, the fact that we had the video out there. And, and once I knew that we had it of, of them, uh, and, and I suppose in a perfect world, we would have had the video footage taken from the other side of it. But the first thing they would have done is they would have said, okay, you know, confirm, is there a date time stamp on that? They were looking for excuses. And can I, do you, did you want to say more highs to people or do you want me I to? I do, but continue with what you're saying. Oh, you well, do that first. well, it was just that, they, uh, the IAG, especially Jim, uh, under prep, he absolutely, <laughs> I love it, <laughs> patent pending. Yeah, the uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> uh, he he was just digging. He would not. He just kept setting up defenses at every every single level to where you know they they wanted Nat Geo wanted him and I to you know be on camera together, you know, looking at each other and 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 arguing the points. And I said, look, this test is absolutely worthless. Uh, you know, you never, you're never going to shoot it during the day. You have to shoot it at night, especially with a laser. And he immediately jumped on that. Hopefully, they'd leave it on camera. It says, no, any lasers over, whatever is it, X miles, like eight miles. Or, he goes, they're, they're, they're illegal, and you can only get them through the, through the military, which mm -hmm. is interesting that he would know that. And he mm -hmm. was right. It's like, yeah, that's where we got it from. We, we you know, ordered it through whatever special permit and got a military grade laser. He refused and, to look at the footage anyway, regardless of what laser. Well, yeah, that was it. And then, he, then we said, and not only that, I put there was a hundred page report that I sent to National Geographic before we even got to California, it, covering the whole hungry test that was sanctioned by the Guinness Book of World Records. And he's going, I don't want to see any report. And he says, I want to see video. And then I followed that with, and yes, of course, we have video. Well, that video is not legitimate. You know, that video, you, know, you have to do it in front of us. It's like, okay, so we can do it in front of any other independent group and you're not going to acknowledge it because literally it's not in front of you. No, you don't get that. It's like, get, I, I trust Guinness Book of World Records far more than I trust this guy. He's a one-man show. He, he was a, the, there are very few skeptics groups in this country and he's one of them in Los Angeles and, you know, that's why he was brought into this. But no, he, he just, there was nothing at, at that point, even said, we even challenged, he, he goes, I want you to bring the laser out here. And then, you know, what would happen then, then he would have tried to control the conditions of the test. I will only validate this test if you fire that laser one foot off the water. And it's, why, why would you do that? Well, it's because that's the conditions. He'd make up some reason. Well, the only reason he'd want it one foot off the water is because he'd want that baby running into some waves, any sort of chop, hope for it, because that would kill, you know, no laser could fire through it. It's like, why not do it three feet? Why not do it six feet? I guarantee he would, there's nothing we could do that would make him happy as far as the conditions of that test. And so he's one of my new people I want to hate. All right, we'll add him to the list. We'll yeah. add him to the burn pile. Yeah, that he and Elon Musk and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye and Brian Cox. All go. right. Michio, yeah. he's off the hook. All right. For now, anyway. We never, you never know when we might bring him back in. Um, I do want to say hello. Ugh. I want to say happy birthday. Hello, hello, hello. I want to say happy birthday <laughs> to Karen P of the Sun and Moon channel. Um, she has a birthday tomorrow, and I'm going to be on Sun and Moon on Friday. So that'll be cool. And what else? Oh, you know, tomorrow's going to be a special show. Myself and DITRH are joining together to do a show at 6 p.m. Eastern on this very same channel. And it'll be, of course, about flat earth and life hacks. So flat earth life hacks. And that's tomorrow at this very same time this show starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So check it out. Um, what else is going on? Live chat is going wild. Uh, somebody earlier was saying, Mark likes to talk. Mark, shut up. <laughs> Patricia wants to do some shout outs. <laughs> fine. It's her fine, show. Fine, Go fine. ahead. <laughs> uh, hi to Flat Earth Vegans and Ridgeview 
and Twisted Pretzel just got banned for whatever he said. Uh, thanks to Chris Topher for doing that. Uh, Shirtless Flat Earther says, thumbs up, yo. Yeah, please give the video a thumbs up because it looks like it's been trolled heavily. So we need to undo the damage they probably did. Although it doesn't matter. In YouTube's world, thumbs down, thumbs up, it's all engagement. It's fine with me. Um, hello to Metal Dog Reads. And he said before the amount of boats started chopping up the water, it was flat and calm. Uh, Robbie D of Celebrate Truth said his wrench disappeared. I guess I was bad. No, every once in a while I take away everybody's wrench and then start over because I tend to give out wrenches like, like candy on Halloween. And then before you know it, it looks like a IPS chat with everybody with a wrench. And I don't want it there to be that many wrenches because it may be off-putting to people. But sometimes you need them with all the crazy trolling. Um, Walter William, hello. Um, bling bling, the BS of the ISS, hello. Aisling Cammy, uh, Hori Sheet Show, and Jonathan Doherty, and Carolyn Gutman Day. And uh, looks like uh, Martin, Martin Liebke is thinking about getting his intent set to go to the United States and the Denver conference in November. So let's all focus our intent on Martin being there with us. That would be really pretty cool. Um, what else is happening? Um, Glenn Parent is here as well. Um, did I say Flat Earth Dude? I'm not sure. Don't really remember. Goddess Witch Bella is here too. Thanks for being around. And Ginger Sugarbush 905. And uh, what else is happening here? Um, <laughs> uh, Celebrate Truth is talking about the uh, Flat Earth 2018 Canada billboard, which is half funded already. I need to donate to that. So definitely check out Robbie D's channel, Celebrate Truth. You'll find information on that or you'll find him on Facebook and you'll see the billboard and just drop a few coins that way. It's always good to have a billboard on the site where you have a conference, I think anyway. Um, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. Glenn Parent said Hudson Bay, Canada is huge and it's flat. Paula Knowledge Scavenger and Anders Ace are here too. And uh, I could go up further and read more people, but I'm not going to because it looks like I might have run out of screen because, you know, how it goes with all the people that were commenting earlier have disappeared off the screen. Anyway. All right. Uh, Christopher is asking, what about IPS? He was awesome. Um, you know, I have no idea, really. I, I saw a channel today. It looked like he was on. Um, but I have no idea if that was really him or a rebroadcast from someone else. You just never know on YouTube. No idea. Okay. What else do we have? What else do we have, Mark? I think we've covered everything. Have we covered everything? Uh, oh, by the way, Nathan, who was on earlier, Bipolar Flat Earth, said he went on his channel and the video was there. Why is everyone saying it wasn't there? I don't know. Mm. Is it that Mandela that effect the or Mandela the Mandela effect? effect? <laughs> the Mandelta effect? Maybe. Um, plant based comedian. Hello. Hello. Just showed up. All right. I'm going to look on bipolar. Well, while while you're, while you're reading yeah. this stuff, I can, I can ramble for a little bit. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who was involved in any way to, uh, with the, not only the meetup, but that entire weekend. Flat Earthers were everywhere. What made this particular thing special for me it wasn't the National Geographic thing. I mean, that's fun and all. But it was the fact that Flat Earthers just moved in mass to everywhere we went. So the first times we saw them, oh, my God, how fun was that? Walking in, there's synchronicity for you. Walking, we're, we're in the parking lot, and the uh, Phil Tast license plate guy drives by as soon as we, we get in there. And what does Phil Tast stand for, for those who don't know? It's flat uh, inside it, the word it's inside the word flat. So every other letter, you can look at my license plate compilation. It's really, really cool. But he drove by just as we're getting out of the car. Yeah, that was a and, sort of weirdly surreal and super cool. And who walks in, who who also drives by as we're, we're getting ready to go in, but Rob Skiba, who is in a member. We, we were really late because it took longer. It took longer than either of our flights. It took longer to... Uh, to drive from LAX to the meetup, which was in Los Angeles, it was only 30 miles than it did to fly there. It only took me two hours and 10 minutes to fly there. Well, from also, Seattle. the skeptics group didn't give us a location where the whole event was to start at dawn. Ha, ha, ha. Right. So we didn't know where to go, one no, side no, no, of the no, lake no. or the other. Meetup not... meet night. Oh, the not... meetup. That was really long, too. Horrible yeah, traffic. But Rob Skiba shows up as soon as we we get there. And we all walk, we all walk in together. 
and it was just so much fun and and nathan thompson was already there and uh you know aaron kreshock and all the people we, we talked about earlier it was just i recognized so many faces from from the pasadena meetup which was fantastic and uh the uh you know the 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 drama that i thought would be between national geographic and cbs didn't happen they worked that out which was wonderful. Fist fight, fist fight. <laughs> well, you know, there's turf wars. Production oh, is yeah. production. One and was like, well, we can talk to Patricia, but we can't talk to Mark. And the other was yeah. like, well, we can talk to Mark, but we can't talk to Patricia. And we're like, what? Right. I know. And if Jaron had showed up, Jaron, where were you, man? If he well, would. Well, Jaron uh, kind of showed up by live stream with Rob yeah. Skiba, so that helped. Yeah, but that he was, that was a very important live stream because that that it was a very lengthy and it covered the whole event. So. Yeah, yeah, that was great. And then when we broke from that, we went over to a Mexican restaurant and there were still, I think, what, 30 of us that were there were that we had to do two long tables at that Mexican restaurant. We were there until they closed. They kicked us out. And then they were just, you know, flat earthers were milling around the parking lot. You know, they wouldn't leave uh, as we were driving away. And then finally, and then we did another, you know, did that flat earth dinner on saturday with with some of the the, the core people that were in, involved in organizing the the meetup and then finally the the part that just i i'm not kidding you i i felt such warmth was when we went to the salton sea even though none of us knew anything about anything right there was like no information you know spread around about where we were going to go and who's going to do it and we showed up in force uh, this is you know fishing hours type of thing in, in, in a horrible place we asked we didn't even ask people this is you know two hours east of los angeles and tons of flat earthers were there yeah and it was and it was great you know and and everyone you know there was it was a really relaxed group and of course you know they got a little more surly as the temperature went up because we were more impatient i was like look you guys are taking forever to do this test we could do this test in two seconds and we did we were the ones that, let's face it after you watch that footage it's obvious without us that test doesn't happen they would have never found the other side. Never would have happened. They would have. They would have panicked, and they would have. Uh, th there's nothing they could have done, and it would have wouldn't have got any exposure. Without us, IG it was irrelevant. Uh, I do want to say bipolar flat Earth Nathan, who was here earlier, said that it was on his channel, and I just looked right now, and it's not there at all. But uh, you know, this the test with Mark Sargent from his show. You know that is there but the the video that we're talking about that's just you is not there in your channel and i've looked several times hmm. so i have no idea why it's not there so it's on mine so yeah. any, okay. anyone can mirror it um on mine of course it is called do 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 flat earth salt and sea skeptics test target side video and it is the com a combination of Nathan's video and the Skunk Bay time lapse mm -hmm. at the end, just to show people what we're talking about. And and it is it's also a warning to any flat earthers that are out there: uh, if you're gonna shoot, shoot before before sunup, absolutely before sunup. Shoot with lights, shoot with lasers, and do not shoot in the middle of the day. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care where you are. Because you're well, going to get temperature swings. You know, what happens if some other big outfit comes along and says they want to do a test over a warm body of water and they're going to prove it's a globe? What do we do? Do we show up and and do what we did at this one? Um, you know, make sure that they understand that this is going, this is built to spill, built to fail, so to well, speak? Well, I mean, I would. Or do we ignore it completely because our presence brings more media attention? If they bring us in in any capacity, yeah. I mean, I, remember, in from where I stood, there, I went there knowing, and you, you and I talked about this at length, I knew full well what was going to happen. Everybody knew what was going to happen from the flat earth side. And so I just kept hammering them over and over, which is like, look, we don't do this test. Flat earthers learned a long time ago that you can't shoot over a warm body of water or any sort of body of water where the temperature you know, fluctuates to any length. And of course, never over a body of water with weather. If you can't, you know, if you can help it, with the exception being uh, a, a stable time lapse thing like Chicago skyline, something like that. But the rest of it is just worthless. You know, we get way more bang for our buck if you shoot at night, if you shoot in cold weather, uh, if you shoot with flash fl flashlights and or whatever light source you have. And of course, the top of the line would be lasers. So that's 
that's all we can do is like look don't keep do if you keep doing this that's fine it, any any photographer we i will just keep sending people the different the different versions of this i will send them the skunk bay thing i will send them road uh, mirage i will send them road dist the heat distortion coming off of any other road everybody knows this it is a common common thing everybody knows when they're walking down a road or driving down a road you look in the distance look why how weird it is and why everything's washed out sorry yeah, exactly. You could just look and see the buildings disappear and appear and the cliffs, yeah. or not cliffs, and the, the mountains I, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, in, While we were sitting there, we didn't need balloons down there, to that. And, and the, the National Geographic, they wanted to talk to us like, I don't know, every was 30, 40 minutes or something like that. I mean, every time I was like, I just pointed out to the water. I'm going, look, that coastline is now changed. The the What used to be there, the buildings there, they're gone. That mountain range down in the in that looks like an island now, it ha used to have a little friend to the right of it. That thing's gone. That mountain has shrunk to where it's almost nothing. And he, you know, the uh, Jim wouldn't even wouldn't even acknowledge. It's like, what do you think's happening here? Yeah, you you got lucky. Either you got lucky, or you were more clever than I thought. And I'm not going to give them that much credit because they didn't even realize that they couldn't figure out how to how to actually find their target. So they lucked out with the heat because by the time they shot, if they had the test gone off at exactly five thirty in the morning, no problem whatsoever. In fact, even when we remember that video that we that, that's up on my channel, even that was at seven after seven o'clock, and we still had it. But after that, it was all bets were off. You know, the sun started getting higher in the sky and the heat waves got bigger. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, look, can barely see the balloons. Really? Really? So. Well, I'm looking in the live chat and I want to say hello to Karen B. And uh, Mark of uh, Zulu One Channel and Ron Hagberg. And uh, ah, Bipolar Flat Earth has figured out the puzzle. He said the video got unlisted and he just changed it to public. So indeed, you can get it off the Bipolar Flat Earth channel. And as I said, all that will be in the description box. Mark's video, which you can feel free to share on your own channel yeah, yeah, or sure. the, the just the Bipolar Flat Earth, Nathan's uh, video. that's not put in a sort of context, but is definitely the raw footage. Right. So, hmm. Yeah. Well, I think this has been a really fun show and I think it's been informative, uh, not with flat earth proofs, but with an explanation if any of us in the community, and I use the word community, knowing that not everyone likes each other. Like I've said dysfunctional family before, because we're all on the same team, we're all in the same family, but some of us don't like each other. And that's totally fine with me. Do you and I'll do me. Right. But uh, that this shows that if you get some comments on your video or a friend in Flat Earth tells you, oh, Flat Earth was, or a friend of yours tells you Flat Earth was debunked due to the skeptics uh, test or National Geo, they're calling it also a National Geographic test that the Earth's right. curved. Just remember, you now know the truth and you are well armed uh, to, to, to let them know exactly what did happen. Right. And we've all learned from this. We, uh, we all kind of knew already about how the water can play tricks, the temperature and change perception. But this is just yet another lesson uh, that will help us be more clear in the way we get experiments across to people when we, when we have to uh, explain it, so. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And let me throw in one more point. Mm -hmm. When we first showed up there, remember, it was it was freaking dark. The moon was out when when we were driving down there, uh, you and me and, and Stephen. And when we got there, I walked down to the beach and I could easily see the buildings with the lights on the other on the shoreline. You know, that's the point is like, look, they were right there. Could see it along the entire line. And within three hours, we couldn't even see the buildings anymore. So what does that tell you? Did the curvature just magically appear three hours later? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. It just meant that the distortion just started kicking in. It just got higher and higher and higher. Uh, it is no joke. Look, look at the time lapse footage and watch it. It's only four minutes long. Watch the skunk bay time lapse footage at the end. You can either look it up on the original channel or look it up in, on my video that I just put out. The fatter salt and sea skeptics test. It is. It's wild the amount of distortion, and it varies on top of it. I mean, it goes up, it goes down, the, the buildings extend, and then all of a sudden there's no land. And National Geographic, right where they were, could see that happening in front of their very eyes. But you know what? People don't notice that. They're no. too busy, especially not Geo, looking at their phones, looking at their computer oh, they, equipment. They, they, they were busy. They, yeah, they were busy. They had to set up the drones. And they meanwhile, were... truth is all around them. 
And that can be said for all of us. Uh, in Flat Earth, once you get this far, you are starting to look around and not just look down at your phone anymore because we've become more awake in this awakening process. But it is true. Life can pass you by and you can miss out on truth. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, I also noticed when we arrived in the morning at dawn, waiting for the test that was supposed to be beginning at dawn, I remember right. as we were driving, you said, well, we'll know we're in the right place because we'll see them inflating balloons. It'll be a big group of people. Well, yeah. they weren't even really there yet, inflating no. any balloons. So that's, I was wrong. No, and, but, and I forgot this real quick, even though Nathan, I think, said it briefly, which was, and National Geographic, I don't, I don't think it's going to talk about it, and that was the heat got so rose so quickly that the long distance photography um oh, the, the targets the balloons exploded oh yeah i mentioned both, that both of mm -hmm. them and when that ha you know it's like how did that happen oh i don't know because you waited too long you were never <laughs> exactly. supposed to wait for the sun to get that bright right to where the helium balloons and they didn't look like they were that tight they they expanded and expanded and then they detonated and that was it. That was the end of end of that part of the test. No matter no matter what. So uh, well, when we came in, I was looking skyward, and nothing was much happening. We were kind of waiting for things to begin, yeah. and I saw a plane fly by, and several people did, and we watched as it left a trail in the sky, yeah. and that trail in the sky was um, like a uh, dot 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 trail, not a straight across trail. Hmm. And then it the plane disappeared, and then we watched as the sky was covered over in fine mist and it made me think because i'm a conspiracy person that maybe that was the powers that should not be sent a plane to make the visibility even worse mm. i know that's crazy talk right mm. but <laughs> right above where we were right above at 5 a.m yeah. Yeah, it was it was an interesting weekend, and I hope I never have to to go back to that one because it just I'm sorry, it's just an awful location. I mean, and uh, Angel said it best, in my opinion, where he said, "Look, uh, it, it strike anybody as strange that even though everyone was based in Los Angeles, we didn't go to I don't know the ocean, which Los Angeles borders for hundreds of miles." Why, why, why we didn't go there and, and do a shot across Catalina Island, you know, look at Catalina or look at something across. And the reason why you wouldn't do that is because there's not much wiggle room there. The island's either there or it's not there, but plenty of people have taken that shot. Uh, taking this one across the Salton Sea in the desert, you got lots of, only, all you had to do was wait for the heat. And that was it. And you were, it was over. And they were fortunate because you know, the, the, Nat Geo was going to hang out there. They had booked it all the way till three o'clock, and I think they used all of it. They uh, they booked the whole park, and I think they were there literally until three. Stephen Chess, who has the uh, channel where he explores flat Earth weather, weather, was saying he went back to LA that day, and there were chemtrails in the sky there too. So, mm. you know, I don't know what those those chemtrails do. I don't know, but I know that they make the sky all cloudy and misty and gray. And um, I don't know the exact components. I don't know who's doing it. None of us really do. We'd only be hazarding a guess, but we know it's not natural. It's not what skies used to look like. And it's not just regular planes flying by because just because, well, we know, we know. Well, thanks to everyone in the live chat. I truly appreciate it. And as I said earlier, give the video a thumbs up. Mark Sargent's channel, if you're not yet subscribed, it's in the description box, as are uh, the number of people that we've had on the show today and their various videos. So, um, as I said earlier, DITRH and I will be on uh, June 14th, which is tomorrow, 2018, for uh, episode 235, excuse me, yes, 235 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's going to be Flat Earth Life Hacks. So, join us for that. And then on uh, Friday, the 15th, I'm going to be on with the Sun and Moon group, um, Karen. And uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. Cool. And until we meet again, Mark, how should we keep it? Um, flat. Yeah, that'll do. All keep right. it flat. Hail Hydra, George.